Hi, welcome to my channel and today I have another theatre vlog for you. So today I am off to the Lowry to go and see 12 Angry Men. Don't know too much about it. I think it's like a courtroom thing um, about, I think it's about a boy who murders his father. Something like that. I think it's based on a film. So I'm really interested to see it because like I said I don't know anything about it and it's a new show for me to go and see. So today I'm sat in the stalls. I'm on row O. Um, I think seat 31. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it and I will get back to you now once I am at the Lowry. <laughs> Okay, so I'm now at the tram station. It's half six, so I'm much later than I wanted to be. Uh, I wanted to be there in half an hour. It's going to take me at least 45 minutes to get there. The tram here isn't due for another four minutes. And then I have to change a Cornbrook, so hopefully I'll get there for half seven before it starts. But we'll see. Trafford Centre tram because the Eccles tram was absolutely rammed and it wasn't going to Media City and this one is quicker and look the Lowry's just there so and it was empty <laughs> as well uh, so it's much easier just to get the Trafford Centre tram in fact I might just do that from now on rather than get on the Eccles one which is rammed so I don't know whether to do that tonight coming home get this one we'll see but yeah Lowry's just over there now so I'm actually probably going to make it through just gone seven, I think it's ten to seven now, so not too bad. And even better, the bridge is open today. So it'll only take me two minutes to walk across. So much better than getting the Eccles tram. Okay, so I'm just inside Larry now. I just picked up my program from the press desk. I think it's about five past seven now. I don't think the auditorium is open yet. So. There we go, now it's open. I'll head in in a minute. Okay, so I'm in door A today. I'm on row O, seat 31. So I'm gonna head in now, it's about quarter past. Okay, so row O, seat 31 and 32. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm in my seat. I'm on row O, seat 32. This is the view, so it's quite pretty good view. And 
it's quite an interesting stage because you can see a few things behind the screen. But yeah, it should be starting in about, I think, 15 minutes. So it is now the interval. I'm actually really enjoying it. It's actually really good. Really enjoying the story. It took me a while to get into it. Once I got into it, I'm really enjoying it. So really looking forward to the second half. I'll actually I'll tell you a bit more about it once I get home. But yeah, really enjoying it. From the theatre and thought I'd give you a quick review on 12 Angry Men. Um, so I was kindly invited to the show's press night at the Lowry uh, Theatre in Salford. I was sat in the stalls for this show. I was on row O, seat 31 and the view from that seat is actually really really good. It's sort of um, on the side seat in but the way the seats are sort of get staggered, there wasn't actually a seat really in front of me. So I just got like a clear view down the aisle and it was a really, really good view. I'd definitely sit in that seat again. I really enjoyed the view from there. So if I did book a seat again in the, in the stores, that is one I'd definitely consider getting because it was just like a clear view, there's no heads in the way. So I really enjoyed that seat. So the show itself didn't have any merch plays, very rarely do. Um, the only thing you could buy for the show was the program. Uh, these were six pounds, so that I was gifted mine because I was reviewing the show. So I actually didn't know anything about 12 Angry Men before I actually went to see the play. It is actually based on a teleplay which was produced in uh, 1954 but uh, it's actually best well known from the movie that they made um which was out in 1957 and it starred henry fonda so most people sort of know of 12 angry men from that film i obviously have never watched the film uh, so didn't know what the play was about going into it so if you don't know i'll just tell you quickly what it's about so basically it's about 12 men who are jurors on a trial we don't actually get to see any of the trial that has taken place before this starts so the play actually starts as the jurors are about to deliberate so there are 12 men on the jury and they have to decide whether this young boy of 16 years old has murdered his father and they know that if they do find the boy guilty he will actually get the death sentence and be put to death so the men at first once they're in the deliberation room take a vote straight away to see where everyone's at and the vote stands at 
11 of them believe the boy is guilty and only one believes that he is innocent or that there is enough reasonable doubt to find him not guilty. So juror number eight is the juror who believes that the boy should be found not guilty and so he puts to the others and tells them that they should try and convince him or tell him why they think the boy is guilty and then juror number eight then explains to them why he thinks there is reasonable doubt in what they believe to be um fact so that is how the play unravels um you hear all the information about the trial setting a hand through the jurors i also thought it's quite interesting that all the jurors were men in this Obviously these days we tend to have a mix of of male and female jurors. It's very rare you get a jury which is all one sex. And I think because back in the 1950s in America, um, women could be on juries. However, I think they had the option to opt out and they didn't have to do it. Um, whereas the men didn't have an option, they had to do it. Um, however, that's not another case. Everyone has to do it. But back then, women could drop out, so you did often get juries which were just male, um, which is interesting because you don't get a female's point of view. It's all based on like a male's point of view. Um, so it was interesting to see that. And it was also quite interesting to see how juror number eight was able to persuade um, some of the jurors to change their vote. I'm not going to tell you obviously give any spoilers away but he is able to change the views of the jurors so it was really interesting to see his arguments and how he um explained things and made clear the evidence which they had seen and it was interesting to see how different people interpreted the same piece of evidence so there's actually not a lot of action that goes on in the play it's all basically set around the deliberation table they move around the stage a little bit but it's mostly uh, based on the words so the script is very important in this play so the play is actually very cleverly written the script is intelligent it's engaging and the story is able to subtly build tension and suspense as the case unravels. It also cleverly touches on themes of prejudice and class as the jurors each argue their case as to why they believe the boy is guilty. But even though the play is quite tense and quite serious, there is actually some humour um, which is woven through that, throughout the script and um, is a bit of light relief to all the tension and seriousness that's going on in the play. So the set and costumes for the play were designed by Michael Pavelka and I thought he did a really good job. The costumes and the set both reflect reflected the time period in which the play is set, so in the 50s. And the set itself was like a single static set um, which depicted the deliberation room and the adjoining, adjoining toilets. So... Um, the toilet area sort of had some old fashioned looking sinks and it had a um, paper towel dispenser and that sort of room was sort of used as like a sort of breakout area where certain factions would have conversations in there away from the main uh, group. So that space was, was used really effectively. So it was really interesting how they use that sort of space um, and I thought yeah it was very well used. So the centrepiece of the set was actually the big deliberation t table where they all sat around to deliberate their uh, the case and what was interesting about this was that it actually very subtly rotated throughout the play. Uh, I think it was supposed to sort of represent the passage of time and uh, show that they were in there for quite a long time deliberating. Um, and I thought that worked really well, it was really interesting. I said it was really subtle. I didn't really notice at first, it took a while for me to notice that it was doing that. Um, but yeah, I thought it was very interesting and it was a good way of sort of showing the passage of time. Um, in the play so sort of behind the table at the back of the stage there was three large window set pieces and these windows were able to um, open and shut 
and there was also a big um, ceiling fan which was above the table and there's also a fan on the wall and then he had sort of like a um, water dispenser which was um, like on the right side of the stage um, near the front and obviously there was lots of chairs around and um, so that was the basic set and it was quite simple but it was very effective um, it really helped you to feel the claustrophobicness of the room um also this this the play is set on a really hot and humid day and i thought the use of the fans and the windows opening and closing the windows really helped to um, visualize this also whilst the um jurors were deliberating and the tension was rising in the room uh, there's actually a storm brewing outside and they visualise this really well with the use of rain on the windows and also by the lighting. Um, they actually you um, had um, lightning, flashing lightning, which you could see through the window. So I thought that was really well visualised as well. So the cast for this show was fantastic. And this is actually a great ensemble piece as all 12 um, jury members were on the stage throughout the whole of the show. So I thought the entire cast gave a brilliant performance and they all made their characters feel like real people rather than like just broad stereotypes. So for me, Jason Merrill as juror number eight really stood out. I thought his performance, I thought he gave a really strong performance and he was really captivating and I just thought his performance was like really nuanced and I really enjoyed his character. I enjoyed the way he played him. I thought he was very smart and yeah, I just enjoyed his character the most, I think. Um, so I'll probably now just go over the program and I can show you the cast. Okay, so this is the program. Um, so you see it says 12 Angry Men by uh, Reginald Rose. Uh, it's on at the library from the 22nd of February till the 2nd of March. So inside we've just got some adverts. We've got an advert for Frankenstein, which is on the Larry in March. We've got an advert for My Beautiful Laundra and an advert for Jesus Christ Superstar. Advert for 222. And then we get into um, the 12 Angry Men content. So here we've got a little article. It's called Caught in the Act Regional rose and 12 angry men so this just tells um of how um original rose came up with the idea for the play and how it was based on his own experience as a juror and then we have another article here it says the drama of the courtroom you can't handle the truth from a few good men by Aaron Sorkin. I think so. This is just telling you some other um, courtroom uh, drama plays. And then we have the uh, cast biographies. So, playing juror number eight, we have Jason. Morales, uh, like I said, I really enjoyed his character. Uh, I enjoyed his take on the character, and I thought he gave, he gave a really strong performance. Um, his first set credits include The Girl on the Train, uh, The Verdict, The Sex Party, How the Other Half Loves, um, and those are just a few shows that he has been in. We then had Gary O'Brien playing drawer at number 10. He's been in Educating Rita, Catch Me If You Can, uh, The Case of the Frightened Lady. Uh, this is just a few things he's been in. We then had Tristan Gemmel, who played juror number three. Juror number three is quite a stubborn juror. He really believes that the boy is guilty. And he was qu quite insistent that the boy was guilty and yeah he was definitely the opposite really to juror number eight 
Tristan is best known for, it says Tristan is best known for his long running role as the Zabelagard Bristol owner Robert Preston in Coronation Street. Um, I don't watch Coronation Street so I've never actually uh, seen him in that. Uh, it says here he recently appeared in the West End uh, playing the title role in The Bodyguard opposite Beverly Knight and Alexandra Burke. Uh, all the West End credits include Rope, Dangerous Corner and Jeffrey Bernard is Unwell. So those are some of the things he's done. We then had Michael Greco playing Jorah 7. Jorah number 7 I think just wants the process to hurry up uh, so we can get to a ball game. So he... Um, decides the guy's guilty and he, he wants to just get it done with and leave as quickly as possible so he can get to this ball game. His character was quite funny. He did bring a bit of comic relief to the show and I thought Michael Greco did a really good job. So his theatre credits include Leeds in Chicago on the West End, Exposure on the West End, Kiss Me Kate International Tour and All's Well That Ends Well National Tour. So Ben Nealon played Jorah 12 and Jorah 12 worked for an ad agency and he was sort of like a floating voter. He would sort of change his mind sort of based on whoever had just spoke. He was So he would like constantly flip his vote. So I thought Ben did a good job as well. I feel like the whole cast did a good job. So I think Ben is actually best known as... Lieutenant Jeremy Forsyth in the TV drama Soldier Soldier. Um, again, I don't really watch TV, so I don't. I've never seen him in that. Um, but his theatre credits include Black Coffee, Go Back for Murder, Murder on the Nile, Witness for the Prosecution, um, and there's just a few things that he's done. We then had Gary Webster as Juror Number Six. Don't remember too much about Jorah 6, so I don't think he had a lot to say from what I can remember. Um, but it says Gary is well known for his role in uh, Real Women, Hollyoaks, The Bill and EastEnders. His stage work includes the title role in Macbeth at the Bolton Octagon, uh, Alfie in the play of the same name. Uh, he starred as Craze in K. Miller's A Passionate Woman. Those are some of the things he has done. So we then have Paul Beach as drawer at number nine. Uh, drawer number nine is an elderly gentleman and he sort of has an eye for detail. He was a good character. Um, some musicals he's done include The Rose and the Ring, Annie, Free as Air, and the gondolas. He's also um, been in Twelve Angry Men before. He's been in King Lear. Um, so there's just a few things that he has done. So we then have Sir Marge Hamilton, who played Jorah Number Five, and his character actually grew up in the slums and therefore could relate to the accused. Um, I thought he played the role really well. Um, some of his credits include Shawshank Redemption, UK and Ireland Tour, Abandon, Lyric Hammersmith, Albatross, Playground Theatre uh, and Sweet Dreams and A Beautiful Nightmare. Uh, so those are some things he's done. We then had Jeffrey Harmer playing the guard. Some of his theatre credits include Arthur Burling in An Inspector Calls. Richard Wiley in Out of the Order for Roy. And there's just some of the things he's done. He's got quite a long list of things. We then have Mark Heenum as Jorah number four. Jorah number four was a guy who dealt in facts and, and evidence. And so he was open to consider other possibilities and looked at the evidence in the case. And he was, and he was more open to consider other possibilities. Mark has been most recently been in 
the National Tour of the Short Stamp Redemption. Uh, other things he's done include Not About Nightingales. He's also been in Of Mice of Men and a few other things as well. So we then have Kenneth J, who played Jorah Eleven. Jorah Eleven was a watchmaker from, uh, I think it was Eastern Europe, so he had a bit of an accent, and his character was sometimes like the butt of the joke, and he received a few racist jibes um, from the other Jorahs. So Kenneth's theatre credits include A Midsummer Night's Dream, The Imaginary Invalid, The Odd Couple, Problem Child and uh, a few other things as well. So we then had Paul Leavers playing Jorah number two. And Jorah number two was sort of a quiet older guy um, who seemed to change his mind quite easily. Um, so Paul himself has been in things like The Judge, Sound of Music. He's also been in Catch Me If You Can. Uh, and those are some of the things that he's done. Then we had Owen Aldroy, who played the foreman. His theatre credits include The Shawshank Redemption, UK Tour, um, Blythe Spirit, Betrayal, and The Case of the Frightened Ladies. So that's some of the things that he has done. And then finally, we had Adam Philip Bloom, who was the understudy. And then we have a little bit of information here on Reginald Rose, who was the writer. So on this page here, we have the cast list. Uh, we have the creative team. So we then have the creative team's biographies. And then we have some information on Bill Kenwright Limited, who's the producer. Um, that's some information about that. And then we have an uh, advert for a chorus line, which is going to allow it in July. An advert for Come From Away, which is going to be at the Lowry uh, over the Christmas period. And then we have some more adverts for various things. And then that is the program. So I thoroughly enjoyed uh, 12 Angry Men. Like I said, I didn't know anything about the show going into it. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did, but I really did enjoy it. I am a fan, fan of like um, true crime and like courtroom dramas and things. So this was a really good play for me and I really enjoyed it much more than I thought I would. It is a gripping courtroom drama and despite being written in the 1950s the themes that it explored are still relevant today. I mean we still have juries, they still go through these sort of arguments, they have to obviously deliberate and go through and see if they think there's reasonable doubt. So everything that they went through in this is still relevant today. Also the play has a fantastic cast who all gave brilliant performances, who all brought depth and nuance to their characters. So that is why I am giving this show four stars. Like I said, really, really enjoyed it. Definitely recommend it. It is on at the Lowry in Salford until the until Saturday the 2nd of March. So there is still time to go and see it there. It is on a UK tour, so I will a uh, link down below where you can buy tickets to Larry but also to the page which lists where the, tour, where the show will be touring to so if you can't catch it at the Lowry you can see if you can catch it at any other venues um, so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this little vlog and review if you do enjoy these sort of videos then do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell and you'll be notified as soon as a new video go up um, I try to go to a theatre show at least once a month. I usually do tend to go a couple of times a month so there's always new content coming out. So like I said definitely um, 
subscribe and hit the notification bell if you like this sort of content um, so anyway i hope you have enjoyed the video like i said if you have do give it a like don't forget to subscribe and i hope to see you again soon bye